For today's episode, I have a compilation of scary stories from the deep woods. We need less than 150 subscribers to reach the 2000 mark, so make sure that you have subscribed to Mr. Scare, and I'll begin reading the stories right away. Meanwhile, comment and tell me what stories you would like to listen to. So I work in a residential apartment, and it was a fairly new building. It was built where an old office tower used to stand, and now houses well off residents. I was approached yesterday night by a lady who seemed quite at the end of her rope. She had just moved her stuff in on Wednesday afternoon, and complained of a woman who kept trying to get into her condo. The new resident was alone on that Wednesday night, trying to unpack her bedroom boxes, when the front door began banging in the frame. She called out, and it stopped. Later on that same night, this time close to midnight, her front door knob began to rattle. She yelled again and called the night guard, but no one was found in the area. Thursday night, the same thing. Rattling doorknob and the door banging in the frame. So yesterday, I went upstairs with the woman to check her apartment area. Everything checked out. As I was leaving her suite, however, I almost ran headlong into an old gray-haired woman who was standing inches from the door. As any red-blooded Canadian would do, I jumped back like a scared little girl. The old woman stood her ground, looking between me and the new resident. Can I help you? I asked, regaining my composure and straightening my tie. No. The woman answered plainly. I'm just waiting for the elevator. And as if on cue, the elevator dinged and opened, and she got inside it. I attempted to follow, but was too late and the door slammed in my face. I asked the resident to come downstairs with me to review some CCTV footage. I honestly thought this was a family member of the previous owner, who still had her building pass card, and was confused and lost her way. The new resident and I rewound the footage for the floor, and sat back to watch. When it got to the part where I opened the door, it appeared I jumped back at nothing. The hallway was empty. And I was talking to nothing. The lift had opened on cue so that was something that strengthened my case, that I was not imagining things. But to this day, we are still not sure who it was, or rather what it was. It hasn't harmed anyone yet. And I hope it never does. Similarly, there was another incident where I worked before. This happened when I was guarding a corporate building on a night shift. A call had just come in over the phone from the high-rise. Apparently, a lawyer was possibly having a heart attack. I grabbed the AED and radioed for paramedics before jumping into the elevator and heading up. When I got there, the lawyer, let's call him Tom, was laying on the floor, clutching his chest and looking very ashen. His skin was clammy, he was breathing heavily, and was complaining of agonizing chest pains. I shoot his co-workers away, and stayed with him until the paramedics arrived. At this point, he seemed to be slipping in and out of consciousness, and I was readying the AED in case it was needed. A while later, the paramedics burst out of the elevator, and began doing their thing. They had a much better defibrillator, so I got the hell out of the way and began taking down names and times. Tom was conscious again, and was begging the paramedics to help him, he didn't want to die, he didn't have a will set up, he needed to call his ex-wife, etc. Suddenly, Tom looked up towards the ceiling, over the medic's shoulders. His face, already pale, whitened even further. He tried to scoot backward on his butt, but the medics held him there, telling him to calm down. He paid them no attention, as if they weren't there, and screamed. I don't fucking believe it! No, no, no! And then he made a heavy sigh noise, and flatlined. They weren't able to bring him back. We still never know just what he saw. Although an urban legend says that in our dying moments, we see a reaper who takes us to the afterlife. Maybe he saw one that day. The look in his eyes shook me forever. He knew his time was up, before his time was actually up. I work for the military. And when I was posted in Afghanistan, we were in the mountains right on the Pakistani border. The first few months of the deployment were pretty hairy, but as soon as winter rolled around, and the fighting season dried up, things got really quiet. 
Night shift went from when are we gonna get hit to what kind of weird shit am I gonna witness tonight? I think it was February or so, and I was out on guard in the north facing machine gun shack. We all had night vision devices, and since it was pitch black, we always wore them on our night shifts. One night, I was looking out into the mountains when I see what looks like a dude coming crawling out from behind a boulder up the hill, about a hundred meters away. It being the month of early February, we hadn't gotten hit in almost a month, because there were two feet of snow on the ground, and the temperatures were hovering right around zero, so the Taliban chucked deuces back to Pakistan, and left us alone for the cold months. Now, this dude was on all fours, like a fucking animal. Just sitting there, half behind a boulder, seemingly staring into my soul. So I pointed the machine gun at him, and turned on the visible laser. I put the laser right on his nose, and still didn't get any reaction out of him. Nothing. He just stood there, and plainly stared at me. So at this point, I'm getting a little freaked out. Ever since I was posted here, I had been blown up, shot at, and almost had an RPG fired toward me, and now some local was playing games. I radioed into our tactical operations center, that there was an unarmed local staring at me on the north post, and I either wanted someone to clear me to wax him, or come out and look at what I was seeing. The officer on the radio tells me that he's sending a private out to babysit me. I ignored the unnecessary dig at me, and waited for the guy to show up. The dude comes out, looks up at the hill at this dude, and promptly nopes the heck out. He then goes back to the TOC, and tells the operator that there really was a dude just staring at us out on the mountain. So the operator comes up to the shack, and I point this dude out. I shit you not, as soon as the guy gets eyes on the local, the dude jumps up, hops up on the boulder, and starts fucking screaming like somebody just dipped him in boiling water. Guard tower at the east corner can now also see the guy, and as soon as the crazy local started howling, east shack loosened about a 30 round burst of bullets out over his head. That shit is really loud and especially when it's dead quiet. The crazy guy jumps off the rock, and runs down the mountain screaming the whole way. It was dead quiet the rest of the night, but the commander upped security to 50%, meaning half the dudes on our outpost had to pull security the rest of the night. The running joke for the rest of the winter, was to be on the lookout for the mind control experiment that the CIA lost track of. This freaked me forever. I am quite certain that it was not a man. It was some sort of a creature or a cryptid. So my younger brother moved in with me a few weeks ago, and he got a job doing the night shift custodial work at a nearby high school. His daily work hours begin at 10 p.m., and fortunately for him, it's close enough to walk, because he gets off shift about 20 minutes after I have to leave for work in the morning, and he doesn't even have a car of his own. One night, a little after midnight, he calls me in a panic-stricken tone, asking me to come down and pick him up. I asked him what happened, to which he just said he needs me to come to pick him up because there was some kind of weird shit happening. I mean those were literally his exact words. He quite clearly announced that there was no way he was going to stick around by himself. My brother isn't the sort to freak out over little things, so I hop in the car and head down towards the high school. Now to provide a little background and context, as a little kid, my brother was apparently sensitive to otherworldly stuff. He often talked about various seemingly supernatural encounters. He was very receptive to that kind of anomaly. In one very old house that we lived in, he told our parents that a man would come to his room at night and tell him bedtime stories. It wasn't until we were grown up that our father told us that a distant relative had committed suicide in the same room that was my brother's bedroom, years before either of us was born, and that my brother's description of the man matched the deceased relative. I think it was good on my parents' part to keep the story to them until we were adults. But at the same time, it was unbelievable that despite knowing that there was a ghost living there, they continued to live in the same house, and did not move out. Anyway, I have given enough context about my brother. Now a little about me. I'm the exact opposite. Nothing creepy or supernatural ever happens to me or even around me. If it happened there before, it doesn't happen when I'm there, and often doesn't return after I leave. 
I've had enough perplexed people tell me that their ghost went away after I visited their house, or that a particular place stopped being creepy after I was there, or had someone acting crazy calm down when I talked to them. In a way, I was assumed to be some kind of natural repellent for creepy shit. Now back to the incident where my brother was calling me. So I get to the high school, and my brother is standing by the front doors. He runs over to the car and tells me that I have to come and make it stop. There was a sound of lockers opening and closing just out of sight. He would turn a corner of a hallway and hear a locker open and slam close behind him, or around the corner of the next hallway. But when he turned around, there was nothing. We went into the school, and my brother was practically hanging on my arm. We walk up and down all the halls. Nothing happens. No sounds, no movement, and no lockers opening or closing. No cold spots, no inexplicable drafts, no creepy noises or feelings. We walk down the last hallway, at which point it was almost 2 a.m., and I just wanted to go back home because I was tired and exhausted. At the end of the hallway, there's one locker standing ajar, and as we approach it, my brother reaches out to close it, pulls his hand back, and says, You do it! I close the locker with slight hesitance. But nothing happens. Finally, my brother says I can go, as long as I promise to come back the next night, if there are any more problems. A week later, he comes home and hands me a thank you note and a $50 Amazon gift card from the head of the custodial department for services rendered by me. Yes, I got paid for being Dean Winchester who got solved a supernatural problem. But that made me a little curious, because the department paying me for it meant only one thing. They were aware of supernatural occurrences. And not just the people on the ground, they were aware even high up the management ladder. So I visited the office to speak with them. And they gave me the royal treatment. Later they told me that the lockers opening and closing were just one of the many things that were happening there. At times, things would go missing. The furniture would be seen moving in CCTV footage, and the faculty that left late would sense dread at times. Luckily no one was ever harmed, but the complaints about these paranormal activities in the high school were a pain for the management, and they were glad that it all stopped after I arrived. I still remember that one time I worked nights for a uniform rental company, running the washers and dryers. It was a pretty easy gig for me, especially after I had been working there for two years, and Friday actually was my last shift. I got a transfer to the service department, which I start today. My shift in production ran from 12 to 9 a.m., and I'd take my first break around 2.30 in the morning. It was only one time in the two years that I've been there at that time, and I have been creeped out like anything. I go to take my break, handing off running the machines to our maintenance guy, and I walk out onto the main production floor. I have to cross this huge area covered with tight aisles of uniforms. As I am walking past the uniforms, I get that feeling. The feeling like you're being watched. I felt my neck and arms break out in goosebumps, and I get this stupid random thought whispering in my mind. Don't look to the left or right. Keep your eyes locked forward and pretend nothing's wrong. That stupid, stupid thought got a grip on me enough to make me abide it. I walked straight and didn't look left or right, across the production floor and on into the break room, and rushed outside for a smoke. Immediately, the tension disappeared. I thought it would get worse, considering I was walking out into the dark, but no, it melted away like butter, and I calmly sat out in the night puffing away and telling myself I was being crazy. Every ounce of dread I had walking through the plant was gone, and I chalked it all up to an overactive imagination. But that wasn't the case. It wasn't mere imagination. In fact, those were my instincts. Survival instincts. They always alert us when we are being watched. But at that time, I blamed it on my imagination and relaxed, until my break was over. I walked back into the plant and it hit me again, like a fucking wall. Every animal instinct I possess was screaming that something was watching me, and whatever it was, it didn't like me, and it wanted me out. The goosebumps came back and doubled. My face broke out, and the only thing I can equate it with is if you get a bad sunburn and your skin starts to feel too tight. By the time I got back to my work area, 
I was shaking. I don't believe in the supernatural, at least I didn't, but at this point, I couldn't think of anything that would explain that active malevolence that followed me through the plant. I even asked the maintenance dude if he felt anything strange, and he just gave me a stupid look, so I dropped it. In my work area, I was fine. Maybe it was because there were about eight other people on the night shift, and around them, everything was relaxed. But the moment I walked over into the main plant area alone to unload clothes from the conveyor belt, I got that creeping dread, and I'd hurry along back to the others. After a few hours, I was good. The feeling went away. Whatever evil I was experiencing, went away or at least turned its attention elsewhere. Around 7 in the morning, I found out what that evil was. A fucking cat. Don't laugh. But yes, it was the devil's favorite pet, a cat. By this time the day shift had come in, and when I ran the conveyor belt, a fucking cat tore by like a bat out of hell. He must have jumped out the fence, and came in through the bay doors, and hid in the plant properly. We'd see cats outside all the time, so it's not really surprising one would get in. So all the feeling I got of being watched, I was right. But there was no paranormal stuff. I got stalked by a fucking stray cat. The project that my team was working on was nearing its end. Since the deadline was near, we were pulling an all-nighter and were working till 5 or 6 a.m. for the entire week. So not the night shift exactly, but close enough. Anyways, it hits 4.45 a.m. and I decided to head off home for some sleep and then come back in for 10 a.m. in the morning. I say goodbye to some friends and promptly begin to head back home, which is barely a 15-minute walk from my office. As I walk across the car park, I spot a guy walking on the pavement way on the opposite side. He was dressed in a full black tracksuit, with his hood up and cap down. Quite naturally, he came off as a suspicious guy, and me being kinda small, I kept my eye on him. I hit just towards the other two buildings on my work site, and I hear him shouting. I turn my head to look at him, and I see that he's clearly pointing it at me. He sounded very hostile, but I was unable to make out the words. I picked up the pace walking between these buildings, and decided to look back over my shoulder. And there he was, arms up in the air, and walking menacingly towards me in the center of the road. Now just for better understanding and clarity, the car park we have is very big, and there would have been no way the guy would have crossed it in a minute or two. I mean that was how long it took for me to be where I was, without running. This guy was definitely out to terrorize me. I've never been stalked in my life and at this point, a dry fear came over me. Immediately, I worked out my options. Firstly, I could run. The second option was such that I could just walk to the student dorms in view, and pretend to be a student locked out. The other two options were that I could continue walking home, or worse, turn back and head to the office. I pretty much decided all of these were moot, as I didn't want to get chased at close to 5 in the morning, or be trapped outside a building with a guy who could easily catch up to me as I stood pretending, or let the guy know where I lived. This is especially since there were a lot of dark places around, that I could just see myself being dragged down by the guy. Finally, with going back to my workplace, to avoid turning back on myself and him, I'd have to walk down an even darker alleyway, which I don't like doing during the day, let alone at night. So I just kept walking, picking up my pace, not enough to be obvious but enough for me to make some distance between us. I walked past the dorms, turned onto the main road where there were street lights, and immediately took out my phone to ring one of my co-workers. I literally blew up his phone, as I kept my other hand in my pocket wrapped around my keys, such that if it turned nasty, I would have a weapon to do some small damage. Thankfully after six times, the co-worker picked up and immediately ran out to where I was, all while staying on the phone with me. I ended up dashing into the first takeaway place that was open, and just stood waiting for my co-worker to appear. The guy never followed me down the turn I took to get to said takeaway, he must have just carried on walking. I got walked home and whilst I was a little nervous walking home late at night afterward, I'm not afraid of doing it again. Just a little more cautious now, and I often tell someone when I'm about to head off, that I'll message them when I get home. Nothing bad has happened since then, 
and that was close to two months ago now.